Tony Dungy here on the Rich Eisen Show. Your best team through 11 weeks, you've seen a lot, uh, would be which team? Either conference. I've changed week in and week out. Two weeks ago, I thought it was the Saints. I, I just thought their defense was playing at a high level. Breeze was back. They were going to get Kamara and Cook back. And, and I just thought they were the team. And Atlanta went into New Orleans and really took them apart and, and dismantled that off the front. And I said, wow, that, that was shocking to me. And then Baltimore, every week, they just seemed to get a little bit better. I was worried about their, their defense, but they've played better. Right now, over the last three weeks, no one's playing better than Baltimore. So if you had to win a game right now that you had to say, I'm going to take this team to win this weekend, it would be Baltimore. I would take Baltimore right right now as we speak. I think they're playing the most complete. Their offense is really a handful for people to absorb in one week. And uh, they, they put a lot of pressure on people. And defensively, they're making enough plays and putting enough pressure on with their front. Uh, I would take them in a one-game knockout right now. Mm. And then the NFC team that you'd put up against them would be who? Who's best suited? <sighs> wow. Um, I, I think we'll find out Sunday night. I don't want to hype our game. No, but go San for Francisco, it. <laughs> San Francisco, Green Bay. Uh, I'm not – crazy about Green Bay's defense, but Aaron Rodgers uh, seems to have a running game going with him now, and that has made him into a better player. Uh, They've got pass rushers, so when they do put up points and they get ahead, uh, they they can uh, really shut the door on you, but the the problem, I think Green Bay's going to have a team like San Francisco that could run the ball at them and use that time of possession. Um, they, They can I think Green Bay can be had if you've got a strong running game. I mean, isn't it amazing that in this day and age, again, of spread them out, five wide, um, who needs a fullback, right? That two teams that are performing so well are running the ball down your throat in Baltimore and San Francisco. Do you think we are maybe witnessing finally uh, a stemming of the tide of just winging it all over the lot? Tony. Well, I think it's two teams that really understand what football is all about now. And everybody is coming up with these situational defenders and situational pass rushers and defending this red and five wide that if you come with a powerful running attack, it is so different than what people have had to deal with. Uh, it catches a lot of people totally off guard and people aren't ready for it. Green Bay is really you know, they went out and got the two Smiths, and they said, hey, we're going to be able to rush the passer, and they can do that. And and Chicago, you know, had that great pass rush. But now when they're playing close games and people are running the ball at them like the Rams did uh, the other night, um, it, it's different. And I don't think people are ready to handle that. Your MVP through 11 weeks would be who? It, it's one of those quarterbacks, and, and I kind of change every week. Right now I'd have to say Lamar Jackson. No one thought – no one had Baltimore as the best team in, in the league uh, week one. No one thought that. And Lamar has been the difference. They've got a, a, a coach who's really done a great job, I think, of, of molding to his talent. But he's been the difference week in and week out. And when he was out in Seattle and they, they beat the Seahawks in a tough venue, he was the difference maker. So I'd, I'd have to say right now if I was voting – that's who I would vote for. You know, it, it really is amazing. I mean, what he has done is truly remarkable. And we're still yet many wondering if it is sustainable. January comes. How will it be different from last year with what the Chargers did to that offense uh, in their house in the playoffs, Tony? Well, Lamar is more mature, and he understands. And they've also had a year more with him and fine-tuning this offense and coming up with answers for things like what the Chargers did last year. But it's still too early to see if it is sustainable. We can go back a few years, and we were all gushing about Robert Griffin uh, this time his rookie year. And, gosh, what is the league going to do to, to – handle him and rein him in. And I was thinking about as a defensive coordinator, what can you play? This is a guy who can run 75 yards if you play man coverage and all of these things. And, you know, those quarterbacks, if you're going to run that much, you're still going to get hit. And what kind of toll is that going to take? But I I think the difference between Robert Griffin's situation and Lamar Jackson, Baltimore has embraced this. Mike Shanahan still had his system, and he still wanted to run that. Ozzie Newsom 
told the Ravens, hey, when we draft this guy, we have to sell out. We've got to get these type of linemen. We've got to get these type of running backs. We've got to get big, strong receivers who can block. And we, more than that, we've got to get receivers who aren't going to complain if they only catch 30 passes the whole year because it's going to be tailored to the tight ends and the RPOs and that. So everybody has bought into this. They have put all of these college running plays in, and it's, it's a handful on the NFL. Now, Lamar's got to stay healthy. And he, he's so far he's done it. He shows no signs of wearing down. But uh, I said that about Robert Griffin his first year too. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on Directv for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.